So one thing I remember really wondering about uh, back in the day was how is it that one preamp can cost $50 and one can cost $500 and they do basically the same thing. Um, and I know there are other videos of people talking about this from kind of an audio opinion perspective, but I'm going to keep it to the actual parts that are in it and uh, what they cost and what that means for the quality. So for my $50 preamp, I have got this Behringer interface. Uh, it's got a single preamp. It has served me well for a few years, uh, and it was indeed $50. For my $500 preamp, I have my first DIY project ever, which is a Hamptone uh, two-channel preamp. It was actually about $1,000, but it's two channels, so it's our $500 preamp uh, to keep it to a nice order of magnitude between the two. Um, so I've taken them apart so that we can look at what's inside. And uh, let's start with the case. So the case of the Behringer is, is like two pieces of steel and some plastic. Um, I mean, let me say off the bat, it's impressive that this thing is $50 to begin with and it works, you know? I mean, some really smart, highly educated people had to work hundreds of hours on this. Uh, so they have to amortize that. You know, it's probably, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's assembled in China. It's got to be shipped over on a boat and then the retailer has to take a margin. Um, it's just you know, just constantly mind-blowing to me that consumer electronics are as cheap as they are. Um, so, with all that said, you know, nothing but respect. But, yeah, the case, it's like uh, pretty thin steel um, plastic sides. You know, it's, it's kind of cheesy. You don't want to look at it the wrong way. Definitely don't want to, like, take it on tour. Um, the Hampton thing, uh, dang! This is so heavy, <laughs> and this is the top. It's like, it's impressive. And a lot of high-end gear is like this, where it's just built to like military spec. Uh, it's just a tank. And I'm sure you could run this over with a car and it would be fine. So big difference off the bat in terms of the, the case. And that's also a big driver for, for price. You know, I'm gonna guess this um, was, I bet they, they build in like five bucks for the case, for this thing. For this case, I wouldn't be surprised if after all the finishing and stuff, it was $100. Wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, okay, the next thing that is the, the biggest part in most, uh, sorry, the biggest cost in the build materials after the case is anything that the humans <laughs> have to interact with. So XLR jacks switches, potentiometers, and because those are the things that fail first because we're putting our grubby primate hands on them all the time. So let's look at what Behringer has. Um, this XLR is from Chun Sheng. So it's like an off-brand XLR, um, probably not the highest quality. Uh, same with all the other connectors. You know, if you're making something this cheap, you have to squeeze every part for every penny, and that's what you see here. Um, they're all kind of off-brand parts, and they're gonna be, they are just going to fail someday soon. I've had this since 2013. I'm on borrowed time with these parts. These, on the other hand, um, uh, let's just look at the power switch. Um, no, I'm sorry, the gain switch. So the mic gain controls aren't even a potentiometer. They're these multi-pole, multi-position switches. I'm talking about these green things here with discrete transistors soldered between the different positions for like really precise gain setting. And they're just, they're just amazing. <laughs> you know, they, you can hear them. Same with the power switch. Listen to that. Um, so all these parts, they're just expensive parts. Same, we've got Neutrik metal XLRs here. So uh, I'm just going to off the top of my head say yeah, like 30 bucks, 30 bucks, five for each of the XLRs, five for each of these switches, seven to 10 for that. So, you know, we're looking at another hundred dollars here just in the stuff that uh, you can touch. Um, and then after, so we go case, things you can touch, uh, and then usually the power supply will be the next big cost. Um, 
Behringer did a very smart thing in terms of cutting cost, which is that they just did power via a USB input. So they don't have to include a power supply at all. They just power it from the bus, from the same thing that they're using to send data. Um, not a great thing for fidelity. Um, the big takeaway is that USB is only five volts. Um, and the, how to put this quickly and simply, power really sets the limits of how high your voltage, your signal can swing. So without any extra trickery, which I'm sure there is in here, um, you would not be able to reproduce an audio signal louder than five volts, which is somewhere in the range of like plus 10 dBU, don't quote me on that. But it's far below what we usually want to be able to reproduce without clipping. Um, what they're probably doing here is some tricks where they attenuate the signal on the way in, or there's a DC to DC to converter to bump that up. Those are always kind of noisy and, um, and messy. So that's power there. Power here is, it's just textbook. It's the way you want to do it. You bring the power in directly from the wall, the transformer steps it down to whatever voltage is close to what we're finally going to want. Then you regulate down uh, with discrete regulators like this to that voltage. You clean it up with some filtering. And then by the time it hits the actual audio section, you have your ideal voltages because you can just basically choose it with the transformer and it's all quiet and clean. Um, so what that means in terms of audio is you're gonna have lower noise floor and better headroom. Um, and gosh, this can be expensive too. You know, this power input jack, five bucks, transformer, 20 bucks, uh, you know, so probably another 50 uh, on the power supply all told. And they just skip that all together with, with the Behringer. Zero, you know, maybe something for a, a DC to DC converter chip. Um, and then finally, and this is surprising to a lot of people, finally, the lowest cost in the bill of materials is going to be the actual audio stuff. Um, and so let's look at the Behringer first. It's all chips. At this level, at this price, you're doing everything with integrated circuits. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, per se but it's not going to have character. For the most part, chips don't have a lot of character. And they especially aren't, they don't sound great if you drive them a little too hard. Um, you know, with the preamp on this thing, if I'm turning it up to the point where it's starting to get to the kind of the limits of the chips, I'm not gonna get this like warm overdrive. I'm just gonna get crappy, distortion. And so that's the big difference between kind of an all IC design like this and something like this, where actually all of the parts are obsolete. I mean, not obsolete, but they're all ancient parts. You know, this is what your grandparents would recognize this as what a preamp should look like. Uh, input transformer, uh, one, two, three, four, five transistors, huge capacitors, and then this huge output transformer, and that's the preamp. You know, it's like, it's actually far less circuitry, I'm sure, than each, uh, than the preamps on here, but each part is doing so much more. Each part has its own kind of flavor. Um, if you drive it too hard, that's when it really starts to sound awesome and, and it can really surprise you. Um, so that's the big difference. You just, you can't get the way this sounds with this kind of approach. And this just costs more money. Uh, you know, transformers sound awesome. Uh, this transformer, I'm gonna guess 45 bucks. This one, 30. Um, these big caps, five to $10 each. You know, so we're looking at another 150 to 200 for the audio circuitry. Um, and here the audio circuitry uh, less than five dollars. So that's that's a bit of a breakdown of uh, of kind of how you can make a preamp for fifty dollars. Um, clever design. I'm not going to rule that out. There's a lot of very clever uh, 
impressive design you have to do to make a preamp this cheap, but also squeezing every last penny out of the bill of materials uh, and absolutely, um, you know, just going with the cheapest parts you possibly can versus, um, you know, solid design. There's some very clever stuff going on in this circuit. And then just sparing no expense in terms of the chassis, the human interface parts, the audio parts. Um, and that's how you end up with a preamp that's an order of magnitude more expensive than one that does the same job. Uh, but the truth is they're just going for very different things. So uh, I hope that was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, any of that wasn't clear. Uh, thank you so much for watching.